dear, Mr. Bennett. My dear Mr. Bennett. Neverfield Park has been left at last. Mm -hmm. Did you hear me? Neverfield Park has been left at last. Wonderful news. Netherfield Park is let at last. Have you heard? Netherfield Park is let at last. Indeed, Mrs. Bennett. Is it? Yes, it is. For I have just had it from Mrs. Long. Well, don't you want to hear who's taken it? And do you not want to know who has taken it? Do you not want to know who has taken it? You want to tell me, I have no objection to hearing it. You want to tell me, and I have no objection to hearing it. You want to tell me, and I have no objection to hearing it. Well, as you wish to tell me, my dear, I doubt I have any choice in the matter. Mr. Bingley is his name. Why, then, it is taken by a young man of large fortune from the north of England. Mr. Mr. Bingley, right from the north? And it seems he's a young man of large fortune. His name is Bingley. A single man of large fortune from the north. A single man of large fortune, my dear. Is he married or single? He came down on Monday in Shayton Hall to see the place. And he's single, my dear. Think of it. Oh, single, my dear, to be sure. His name is Bingley. A single, oh, single. Oh, oh, single. A single man of large fortune. And he will be in possession by Michaelmas. And he has 5,000 a year. He's single. Oh, who's single? Oh, Mr. Bingley, what apparently. Oh, what a what a fine thing for our girls. What a fine thing for our girls. Well, what a thing for our girls, Mr. Bennett. What a fine thing for our girls. Is it? How so? How can it affect them? How so, Mrs. Bennett? How can it affect them? How so? Um, how can it affect them? <laughs> and how can that possibly affect them? <laughs> Mr. Bennett, you know perfectly well what I mean. <laughs> how can you be so tiresome, my dear Mr. Bennett? But how can you be so tiresome? Oh, Mr. Bennett, how can you be so tiresome? Oh, Mr. Bennett, how can you be so tiresome? I'm thinking of his marrying one of our daughters. <laughs> you must know I am thinking of his marrying one of them. I depend upon him marrying one of them. You must know that I'm thinking of his marrying one of them. You know he must marry one of them. Uh -huh. Oh, is that his design in settling here? Ah, uh, is that his design for settling here? Indeed. Is that his design in settling here? So that is his design in settling here, to marry one of our daughters. So that is his design in settling here. How can you talk so, Mr. Bennett? This is a serious matter. Design? Nonsense. How can you talk so? Design? Nonsense? How can you talk so? Design? Oh, how can you talk such nonsense? It is very likely that he may fall in love with one of them. But it is very likely he may fall in love with one of them. But you know he may very likely fall in love with one of them. You must go and visit him at once. Therefore, you must go and visit him as soon as he comes. Therefore, you must visit him at once. Therefore, you must visit him directly he comes. You must go and visit him at once. Good heavens. People. I see no occasion for that. Visit him? Oh, no, no, I see no occasion for that. Oh, Mr. Benny. You and the girls go. Or better still, send the girls by themselves. You and the girls may go, or you can send them by themselves, which perhaps would be the best. Enjoy yourself with the girls, or still better, send them by themselves. By themselves? But you're as handsome as any of them. And Mr. Bingley may like you best of all. For as you are as handsome as any of them, Mr. Bingley might like you the best of the party. I, for you're as handsome as any of them, Mr. Bingley might like you best of the party. Oh, my dear, you flatter me. My dear, you flatter me. I certainly have had my share of beauty, but I do not pretend to be anything extraordinary now. When a woman has five grown-up daughters, she ought to give over thinking of her own beauty. Well, in most such cases, a woman hasn't much beauty to think of, my dear. Now, seriously, Mr. Bennett, you must go and see Mr. Bingley. If you don't, Sir William and Lady Lucas will get there before us. <laughs> you should have seen her galloping her horses to beat me from the village just now. Did she win? Indeed, she did not. But she'd stop at nothing to get Mr. Bingley interested in her Charlotte. No, you must go and see Mr. Bingley. Will well, it be impossible for us to visit him if you do not? For we may not visit if you do not, as you well know, Mr. Bennet. Oh, listen, and you'll never listen. You must, Papa, at once. There's no need. I already have. <gasps> have? When? You are over scrupulous, my dear Charlie. These are desperate times. Five daughters, all unmarried, and this house, this land, entailed away to a cousin when you have finally driven me to my death? What must have become of you? I know what will become of me. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, my dear. 
I'll write to assure him of my hearty consent to his marrying whichever he chooses of the girls. I will write him a few lines to assure him of my hearty consent to his marrying whichever of the girls he chooses. I'll tell you what I will do. I will write a few brief lines to assure our new neighbor that he has my hearty consent to his marrying whichever he chooses of the girls. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I shall write to Mr. Bingley, informing him that I have five daughters and he's welcome to any of them that he chooses. Though I must throw in a good word for my Lizzie. Though I must throw in a good word for my little Lizzie. Elizabeth is not one whit better than the others. But you always give her the preference. Oh, he'll have a hard time. Oh, he will, he will. And of course, Jane is the eldest. He will be sensitive to that. Oh, they're all silly and ignorant like most girls. They all being equally silly and ignorant like other girls. They're all silly and ignorant like other girls. Oh, but Lizzie has some glimmerings of sense. Except possibly my little Lizzie. Well, Lizzie has a little more wit than the rest. Oh, pass me my pen. There's no time to be lost. <laughs> but then he may prefer a stupid wife, as others have done before him. There, will that do? Mr. Bennett, how can you abuse your own children in such a way? You take delight in vexing me. <laughs> you take delight in vexing me. No, no, I beg you will not write at all if you... Oh, you take delight in vexing me. Oh, Mr. Bennett, how can you tease me so? You've no compassion for my poor nerves. I have no compassion for my nerves. You have no compassion on my poor nerves. Have you no compassion for my poor nerves? Oh, you mistake me, my dear. I have the highest respect for your nerves. You mistake me, my dear. I have a high regard for your nerves. They are my old friends. You mistake me, my dear. I have a high respect for your nerves. Oh, you mistake me, my dear. I have the highest respect for them. I have heard you mention them with consideration for the last 20 years. I've heard you mention them with consideration these 20 years at least. They've been my old friends these 20 years at least. They've been my constant companions these 20 years. <laughs> Papa! You don't know what I suffer. Well, I hope you will get over it and live to see many young men of 5,000 a year come into the neighborhood. It will be no use to us if 20 such and comes in. You will not visit them. Depend upon it, my dear. When there are 20, I'll visit them all. <laughs> How can you be so resigned to your daughters growing up to be penniless old maids? Leaving everything to that cousin of yours, that, that odious Mr. Collins. Mrs. Bennet, for the thousandth time. This estate was entailed when I inherited it. It must, by law, go to a male heir. A male heir, Mrs. Bennet. As possibly you remember, we have no son. All the more reason why you should take some responsibility about getting husbands, Father. <laughs> no, you escape your unintelligible books and leave everything to me. You will not wait upon Mr. Bingley. I assure you, Mrs. Bennet, I will not. You see, Jane, he will not be prevailed upon. He'll see us all ruined. Oh, if only we'd been able to have sons. <laughs>